Afghanistan Artificial River Project Climate change impacts on water resources have been widely observed, and future impacts are likely to cause significant harm to water resources at both regional and global scales. A country in the western Himalaya, which receives 80% of its water resources from snow and glacier melt. The name of this country is Afghanistan. Afghanistan is poorly developed in terms of scientific research and environmental monitoring. Afghanistan is a mountainous country located in the subtropical zone. It's one of those semi-arid to arid countries of Central Asia, where livelihoods and economies have developed in such a way that they're now strongly dependent upon mountain water resources. Water availability in the catchments without glaciers is strongly related to snowmelt in Afghanistan, mainly during the spring and early summer seasons. Many Afghans rely on snowmelt for irrigated croplands. First Mega Project After four decades of war, three consecutive seasons of severe drought, and a changing climate that's wreaked havoc on rainfall patterns, residents are suffering from a confluence of worsening food shortages in Afghanistan. Two years after its takeover of Afghanistan, the Taliban is overseeing its first major infrastructure project, the Koshtepa Canal, designed to divert 20% of the water from the Amu Darya River across the parched plains of northern Afghanistan. This is a 285-kilometer-long, 152-meter-wide, and 8.5-meter-deep artificial river that extends from the Amu Darya River. The Amu Darya River, which forms Afghanistan's border with Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, and Turkmenistan, originates in the Hindu Kush and Wakhan regions of Afghanistan and stretches for 2,540 kilometers before reaching the Aral Sea. About 6,000 workers are now operating excavators and heavy duty trucks around the clock, working to carve a ditch 152 meters wide wider than the California aqueduct. The canal project was initially conceived in the 1970s under the first Afghan president, Mohammad Daoud Khan, and construction finally began in 2021 under the last Ashraf Ghani. When the Taliban seized power in August 2021, it inherited the project and swiftly approved about $100 million for its construction amounting to about a quarter of Afghanistan's yearly tax income. The project is fully designed and fully funded by Afghans with no foreign support. To save costs, the canal bed has not been sealed with cement, and along some stretches, briny groundwater has already seeped into the canal, tainting freshwater meant for irrigation. Overseas Afghan experts say, the country could face challenges not only in building the mega canal, but also in operating it. Why are they building it? According to Taliban officials, once the canal is completed, provisionally, two years from now, it could irrigate 550,000 hectares of desert, effectively increasing Afghanistan's arable land by a third and even making the country self-sufficient in food production for the first time since the 1980s. But for the internationally isolated Taliban, the canal represents a crucial test of its ability to govern. Approximately half of the canal is being completed, and the rest is being built at a rather fast pace due to an ongoing growing water and food shortage crisis across the country. The canal will play a vital role in ensuring food security and will bring benefits to farmers, particularly those from the Pashtun community who support the Taliban and are expected to migrate to the predominantly Uzbek and Tajik inhabited region. Afghanistan, which has become an arid desert over the past few decades as a result of global warming, declining groundwater reservoirs and a lack of sufficient irrigation systems. The canal is now bound to provide water to more than one million Afghanis, while enabling thousands of farmers to return to agriculture. This will be achieved as 55,000 hectares of land are turned into farms with a great focus on grains and wheat. In fact, the country aims to become a wheat exporter by 2028. The project is said to be completed in three phases. 
The first and second phases involve the actual digging of the canal, while the third phase is dedicated to the installation of water irrigation systems and other infrastructure. Challenges Afghanistan, neighbor countries Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan have expressed concerns over the potential loss of 15% of their irrigation water sourced from the Amu Darya. They've communicated these concerns to the Taliban. Afghanistan holds a dominant position on Amu Darya River as the source of the watercourse, and notably, it is not a signatory to the UN Convention on the Protection and Use of Transboundary Watercourses and International Lakes, established in 1992. Should the Taliban engage in negotiations in bad faith, the Central Asian republics have several options. These include reconsidering or renegotiating the sale of electricity to Afghanistan, as Afghanistan imports 80% of its electricity from Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, and Iran. It's worth noting that the Taliban is reportedly funding the canal project through coal sales to Pakistan, but coal prices are expected to decline by 42% in 2023, according to the World Bank. Additionally, Afghanistan's Ministry of Mines and Petroleum recently announced reduced royalties and customs duties for coal, which may impact project financing negatively. Today, we've explored inside Afghanistan's mind-blowing project that shocked everyone. We hope this voyage was enjoyable for you. If you enjoyed and found this video interesting, don't forget to press the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel. What do you think about Gosh Depa Canal Project? Can Afghanistan complete it and manage properly? Drop your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. We look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.